Today, I would like to talk about the meaning of a Sangha, the spiritual practice community. One day, one supermarket manager in Texas was a little worried about the Friday night situation. Because on Friday night, there are lots of people shopping, but their parking space is a little limited. So many people drive there and discover that there is no parking space and they left. But he discovered a lot of people in the shopping mall just idle away their time, even though they bought what they are supposed to buy. But they just idled their time from this aisle to that aisle and so on. So he <coughs> thought about uh, something, and he played uh, a march, a field music with a faster tempo. Actually, it really started to work. Uh, people started to walk uh, pretty fast. After that, the um, turnover rate uh, increased, and uh, there's no parking problem. <laughs> when we practice uh, Tai Chi, yoga or when we dance to the music. Let's just think about that. To what kind of music do we perform the dance of our life? What kind of music do we hear in our society? Our founding master said whether it is in the West or in the East, the materialism is really overwhelming people's mind. Materialism, consumerism, they give us some invisible pressure to achieve more, to buy more, to get more constantly. Buddha said, Pati Sota Gami, that Sanskrit means swim, against, the, against the, the stream, swim against the current. The current means the current of this world. And Jesus said, you are in this world, but you should not be of this world. But it's uh, very hard to actualize uh, what we think we know. If everybody is walking on the right path, then walking on the left is not easy, even for a very mature practitioner. I was a Christian right after regular college for a couple of years. When I read this passage, I thought about this one. It's a pretty well-known passage. Uh, the Pharisees, the priest guru in Israel, constantly tested Jesus, that young teacher. One day, a woman was caught in the very act of adultery. So according to the law of Moses, she was destined to put death. She was stoned to death. That law was very, very strict at the time. So they asked, what are we supposed to do to this woman? Then, what did Jesus say? Barbara? Yeah. The one who does not sin can throw a first stone. Then people, one by one, start to leave that sin, the place. And finally, there were just two persons standing over there, one was that young teacher, Jesus, and that woman. And he said, woman, where are they? Did nobody condemn you? She replied, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go and from now on, do not sin anymore. When I read this passage, I thought about that. When she went home, did she really 
not commit sin anymore. Who knows, actually? But how, what do you think about that? What's the possibility? Did she sin no more? Jake, how do you think? If she, <clears throat> she found a reason, mm -hmm. if she looked inside herself and said, mm -hmm. this was a moment in my life and maybe I did the wrong thing, this certainly got my attention when I'm looking at all these people that are going to be possibly throwing stones at me. It mm -hmm. didn't happen, mm -hmm. but am I going to risk another possible situation if I get caught again? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons we, we have jails. Supposedly, mm -hmm. if we send people to jail, they realize yeah. I have sinned and they don't sin anymore. It doesn't work that way, though, okay. does it? Okay. Yeah. Related with my today's uh, topic, I thought uh, in this way at the time. Probably she joined a church or some practice congregation and constantly associate with those people. Then probably she would not have seen them anymore. But when she was left by herself, probably the temptation may be too big for her to overcome. So whether they are Christians or Buddhists or just a practitioner, seekers for the truth, our own will is not enough. Our own vow or aspiration is not enough. We need some other support. As I talked before, however healthy a seed is, can you see a picture is up there? It started from a small seed. If that seed did not meet a soil, proper amount of moisture or sunshine, it could not have grown. So we need some sport, some sporting system. Sangha, the spiritual community, is one of that. So according to the words of the Buddha, in order to realize our true self, the emptiness is symbolized by this uh, uh, circular image. Practitioners are not supposed to identify ourselves with anything, but in the initial stage, we should rely on three things, three jewels. One is three Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Buddha, the awakened one, the inner light. The Dharma is the teaching, the path to find it. Sangha is kind of the supporting system. Sangha Sanskrit means the community for practitioner. Originally, Sangha means the monastic community, but it changed uh, these days. What's the meaning of Sangha? First, I think Sangha is the place where we learn the Dharma. We learn a true value system, a true norm. I have one cousin who used to study in London. You know, in London, the price level is really, really high. He studied in university without a scholarship. So my uncle had to send a lot of money every year. He studied there four or five years. He's a really good person with a big heart. He really would like to help others and so on. But he did not have any life goal at all. He idly spend his time in London, just spending money. So my uncle was very mad about that situation. Many people in this world uh, does not have a clear life goal. And we do not know what the really authentic value system which we really trust on. I think uh, in the Sangha where we learn, we can learn and be educated a true norm, the teaching of the Buddha, which we really surrender ourselves in the trust that 
kind of a value system or the path that leads to everlasting happiness and freedom. Did I say what I saw in the television program, Candida Camera? To a couple of people, I, I, I told that. <clears throat> of course, there were several actors inside an interview room, job interview. So, uh, and kind of a victim entered the room, and he discovered five people who are going to have an interview as an actor. Was it there with their pants off? They were wear underwear. So as soon as that guy entered the room, he looked around and he started to take off his pants. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how we live and how we think, exactly. So as I thought, even for the very mature practitioner, the peer pressure, the pressure that is given from this society is not easy to overcome. But in a group setting, in a Sangha, it's very, very easy to overcome those obstacles. I always use the analogy of mountain climbing because my hobby in Korea was hiking the mountains. When you go to the mountain, especially the mountain is pretty high and the road is pretty challenging. If you travel, if you hike by yourself, you tempted to take a rest too often. Or you tend to give up sometimes. First of all, that journey is very, very boring. Boring. It's very, very boring. But when you hike with your close friend, then while you converse among your to your friend, after some time uh, we found out, we stand uh, at the top of the mountain. It's easy and pleasant. Our practice in the Sangha, in the spiritual group is exactly like that. That's why Buddha said Sangha or the spiritual community, the community for practitioners is one of the three jewels. Oh, where's the son? Oh, Reverend Jo is going to join Goenka, the Vipassana meditation retreat, probably this summer. I went to that retreat with a couple of uh, pre ministers when I worked at the One Institute. I was very surprised. 30 or 40 percent of the people who joined that retreat, in that retreat, people usually sit eight or nine hours sitting. 30% are completely a beginner. They have never practiced meditation before. But in that group setting, you know what? Most of the people very successfully practiced. Usually it is less than 5% who live in the middle of the retreat. I happen to see one article, so let me read that. In a, a study by the psychologist Norman Triplett, who found that racing cyclists rode faster when paced or in competition. Analyzing the result of many races, he found that on average, cyclists with a, a pacemaker covered each mile about five seconds quicker than those without. He suspected it was more than just the purely physical effect of a slipstreaming behind another cyclist. That the effect was also psychological, something to do with the mere presence of other people. They called this a psychological phenomenon social facilitation, which stated that when an individual operates in a group which intrinsically matches his goal, this will foster increased product productivity from that individual. No wonder 
the Buddha so often emphasized the importance of having good Dharma friends and the teachers in a Sangha. And so one psychologist, he found this one. Okay. And Sangha, one of the meaning of the Sangha, Sangha is a place where we can meet and associate our Dharma teachers and Dharma friends. That's very, very important. You know what? The obstacles all practitioners have is a very, very similar. What can be the obstacle? Boredom. Boredom. Or restlessness. Or laziness. Very, very similar in its pattern. If we struggle by ourselves to get through that, for ourselves, then we may have to go through a lot of a trial and error, and there is no guarantee that we will make it. But just uh, with the help of our Dharma friends or teachers, uh, we can very easily and skillfully overcome those uh, hindrances. So Tazan said again and again, in my case, I did not have any guide, any teacher he could not meet. So I did all kind of ascetic practice. I have to pass through a lot of trial and enders. You do not have to. You can just follow the path that I discovered and has shown you. Buddha really said the importance of having good Dharma friends and the teacher. So one day, Ananda, his cousin, his lifetime attendant, asked the Buddha, teacher, is having good Dharma friends and the teacher is halfway to attaining Buddhahood? Then Buddha replied, having good Dharma friend and teacher is attaining Buddha." Would you read that, that verse? Yeah, the first thing. The Song Jok Pyok story. He's the father of our second head of Dharma master. He was not guided in his practice, so his head was a, a little swallow. I heard from one of my teachers. Yeah. This is number 40. 40. Yeah. Song Pyok Cho putting emphasis only on sitting meditation, wished impetuously to raise the watery energy and to let the flaming energy fall in his body, but only got headaches for his effort. The great master seeing this said, this headache is a result of an incorrect study method. The perfect way to study should include constant practice in motion and in quietness. In motion, the study of selection of right conduct should be practiced mainly when facing all situations, thus obtaining the three great powers. In quietness, the cultivation of spiritual stability and the study of facts and principles should be practiced mainly to obtain the three great powers. Those who know this way of studying and practice it will find little difficulty in their study and may keep their easy and composed state of mind like the calm surface of a great and windless sea. Eventually, they may naturally let the watery energy rise and the flaming energy fall in their bodies. On the other hand, those who are ignorant about this way of study will foolishly become ill and continue to suffer from it for the rest of their lives. You should be careful of this. Thank you. <laughs> However, straight up, a tree grows. Sometimes it need, uh, we need to prune the branches. <laughs> Likewise, uh, 
our practice should be guided and checked from time to time. There is a related with that, our second head Dharma master said that, that kind of a Chinese saying, even though it is a stone bridge, before you cross it, you should knock it, whether it is solid or not. So in a group, in a practice group, we are, there are lots of teachers and Dharma friends. So we can just ask those obstacles and be skillfully overcome that. Do you know what this Chinese character means? Yeah. Yeah, person, human being. Probably I have a, give a similar Dharma talk in the Philadelphia one time for <laughs> Okay. It's a person, human being, in, in the Chinese. Two pillars uh, relying on each other. This means uh, humans, uh, who should live, uh, relying on each other. We should live among ourselves. We constantly affect and be affected by the people we associate with. Is that true? Even the pets resemble the owner after a long time. We know the couples resemble after their long marriage. Jesus associated with a lot of various kinds of sinners. But you know what? The person, the group of people, he always ate and slept just the 12 apostles. We think we are pretty focused and centered. We are not affected by the people we mingle with. We spend a lot of time with them. We are affected definitely by that. Related with our third head that my master said, even though it is a drizzling, you walk with an umbrella up. If you walk for a long time, you will be soft. The paper which is used for wrapping a fish, it smells like fish. The paper used for wrapping a incense, it smells like incense. Paper is paper, and incense is paper, but when they come together and stay for a long time, they're affected by that. So, with whom we spend the time, with whom we go out for lunch at work, with whom you spend time on the weekend, it's very, very important. Considering the, our workplace, our home, where we spend our life, may not be the ideal place that we spiritually progress ourselves. So in that sense, so having good Dharma friends in the Sangha, in the spending a lot of time with that is a very, very crucial thing to spiritually progress ourselves. I'm not sure it's the statistic in states or in the whole world. 30,000 people every year commit suicide because they feel lonely. 30,000 people every year. Even though many people are surrounded by a lot of people, sometimes we feel very empty and lonely because we cannot truly connect with them. Even though we with some person spend a lot of time, for example, for some business purpose, we cannot truly connect with them. Many times, uh, in, especially in this uh, uh, 
contemporary commercial society, our connection can be very, very shallow. So in that sense, uh, the bond with our Dharma friend is uh, very, very deep and important. The inyan, there is no English word for that. It's a karmic tie or Dharma affinity cross a relationship. It's a Buddhist terminology. And what is the closest relationship? What do you think? Is that I and teacher or I, I and parents? What's the closest karmic tie according to the words of the Buddha? Yeah. It's very true, but Buddha said in a more superficial way. Buddha said, the closest karmic tie is a Dharma friends. Dharma friends. The second closest one is a one and one's teacher, one's mentor. The third is a one's parents. They said. So that kind of a karmic tie, that bond goes actually forever. It goes forever as long as we walk on the uh, spiritual path with the same life goal. So my teacher always told me, as long as you hang around uh, with a chicken, you cannot soar like an eagle. So be selective uh, with uh, whom you spend time with. So, at last, would you read that? Yeah, that second hand that Dharma Masters wrote. <clears throat> the Master said to Cho Chang Wan, We can expect good fruit of a fruit tree only if its seed was of a good species if it meets fertile ground, if it meets favorable rain and dew, and if it gets long-term human care. Likewise, to perfect one's personality, these four conditions must be present. For a human being, the habit force becomes the seed. The habit force becomes the seed. Human beings are each born with different minds and modes of action because the seeds of habits are all different from one another. Therefore, you should exert yourself in the preparation of good seeds by good habits. The ground of a human being is his or her affinity with parents, brothers and sisters, and mentors and comrades. One can be a good person only if one enjoys good affinity with these conditions. One seed will not produce right if one has unfavorable affinities and fails to receive correct guidance, or if one's intention do not do to do the right thing is opposed, or if one does not sow the seed in the correct religious order. Therefore, you must strive to sow the seed to develop many good affinities. The rain and dew of the human being are those of Dharma. The seed of the mind will grow well and make progress and improvement only if one comprehends the scriptures and the canons of wisdom and listens to the teachings of mentors and comrades. Thus, you must receive the rain and dew of Dharma. The long-term human effort for the perfection of a personality is the power of one's own effort one's own effort. 
Even if one has good habit force, a good Dharma affinity, and hears good Dharma sermons, one cannot realize a good personality without one's own long-term effort and ability. One's long-term effort and ability. Therefore, one can realize the great personality who can attain to Buddhahood and deliver sentient beings only if one accumulates actual merits one after another until one's deluded being transforms into a Buddha. Okay, thank you, Jake. <clears throat> I have not had the chance to read the Homer's uh, uh, Iliad. Uh, we know the story of the Odysseus, uh, the Greek king. After 10 year battle in Trojan War, he sailed back to his hometown. But he, because of his cunning act, he was punished <laughs> by God, and he wandered around. It took many years for him to return. One of the challenges, we know the story of the silence. He was supposed to pass in order to return to his uh, home, he had to pass a kind of island where there are lots of uh, silence live. They are very, very dangerous, uh, mystical animal, half a human, half a bird. They start to allure people by their mesmerizing singing. But Odysseus was very curious about how beautiful the song can be. Many people just rode the boat to there and their ship got wrecked and they were devoured by those silence. So what was his solution? He could save himself at the same time, enjoying that silence scene. He bound himself to a post. He asked this man to bind himself with a very thick rope. And he asked this man, even though I say whatever things, you are not supposed to follow my word. And he asked this man, the sailors, to plug their ears with these wax when they, their ship, go near to the isle. Of course, he was the only person who could hear the scene. He was so enchanted and shouted his man, please uh, row the boat there. But they just uh, continued to go. That's how he saved himself. So, like that story, if we, like the word of the Jesus, your, your mind is willing, but your body is weak. We are so prone to the, a lot of temptation, so we bind ourselves to a very solid sangha, then I think we can save ourselves in a lot of perilous situations. So keep practicing and do not skip the service and part particularly associate with a, a lot of good Dharma friends. It's very, very important. Thank you.